3.6 sets graphing quadratic functions in any form. Each different form of the quadratic shows us a different feature. We can use the features to assist us in graphing. The vertex is the most important point. So knowing how to find it is, 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 it is a necessary skill. So in form number one is called a vertex form, which is also called HK form because the vertex is H comma K. The A is always in the front, as you guys know, and it's going to be the quantity of X minus H square and then plus K. The standard form is always going to be Y equals, or in this case, F of X equals AX squared plus BX plus C. And the last form is the intercept form. This is also AKA factor form then again we take out the a in the front and we factor it out so therefore we have x minus r1 as you can see r1 is going to represent root number one and root is another word for x intercept and then times x minus r2 because this is the quadratic the most um, roots we are going to have is two so normally just like the way it is, we said vertex form will give us the feature vertex immediately. And how do we find the vertex? By looking at the equation and list out the h comma k. Standard form is going to show us the y-intercept immediately, which is 0 comma whatever that c value is. Now, but again, according to the paragraph above, it says the vertex is the most important. So we do have to find the vertex, and we did this already in prior skill. So step number one, find the h value, which is the so guys, that's also an input. So you can also write x equals, just know that it is in a vertex um, input. So that's why we use h. It's going to be negative b all over 2a. Once we have that h value student, we plug the h or the x value and you found in step one back into the equation to get k. Now the third form is the intercept form aka factor form. It is easiest to find the roots aka the x intercept. We just take each factor and we set equal to zero. We are going to have at most two roots. Sometimes we are going to have one or none at all if it doesn't touch the x-axis to find the vertex okay to find the h and k so this is more unique is that step number one plot the roots step number two the h value it's in the middle of the roots step number three now that you have the h value you plug in the h value back into the the equation to find your output aka k value so let's try a couple of these students. Steps to graph quadratic functions. Number one, determine which form. Number two, find and plot the vertex. Number three, make, I'm sorry, number three, identify and draw the axis symmetry. Because remember, um, quadratic is going to produce a U shape, so the left and right will be exactly the same, okay? Identify an axis of symmetry. Make a table of values for the parent. We are going to use transformations. And then we're going to use the transformation to make a new table. We are going to graph the new points. And then we are always going to ask to find all of the characteristics. Um, we are not doing that. Cross that out because this was supposed to be there. So go and cross that out. All right, guys, here we go. Examples one to four. Identify A, H, and K, and find the vertex and axis of symmetry. List the transformations and graph it. Transformation refresher. If A is negative, it's going to have a reflection. So reflect over X axis. Now sometimes you are going to hear us say vertical reflection. Okay, so A, K, A. It is a vertical reflection. 
A vertical means it's up and down. So if it's reflecting over the x-axis, if it used to be opening upwards, it is now downward and vice versa. So that's why it is aka vertical reflection. If the absolute value is less than 1, for example, i.e. 1 half, 8 over 9, mm, 3 fourths, right? Da, da, da. Those are all fractions that's going to be less than 1. Then you or I or anyone is going to have a vertical compression. Okay, so vertical compression. of whatever that a value is so if a happens to be a half then it's going to be a vertical compression of a half now if a absolute value of a is bigger than one so ie seven five two dot 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 anything that's bigger than one then it's going to be a vertical stretch now next year is when, uh, is when you are going to learn horizontal compression and horizontal stretch so it's going to, but for this year we are only going to study vertical vertical compression vertical stretch factor of let's say your a value is three then it's going to be factor of three h is going to be going left to right so if you have a positive h okay you are going to go right by h units if you have a negative h this is going to be left by h units. K, similarly, if we have a positive K, we are going to translate. Translate is just going left to right, students. So if you hear the word translate or translation, okay, translation to translation upward, I should say, because this is a positive K. So positive K, translation up by k units negative k translation downward by k units whatever that may be okay example one sets y equals negative the quantity of x minus 5 times the quantity of x minus 1. Students, this is the factor form. Remember, factor form from above, we also said aka. It is the intercept form. Intercept form meaning that we can find the x-intercept right away. X-intercept is when we take y, we're going to set it equals to 0. Okay, so let's go over here. So 0 equals, and then negative 1 in the front, x minus 5 times x minus 1. We'll take each factor and we set it equal to 0. Well, 0 equals negative 1. That doesn't make sense. 0 is never negative 1. So yes, we can just ignore that. x minus 5 equals 0. x minus 1 equals to 0. So that means we have two x in us at, at 5 and at 1. So let's plot that immediately. So here's 1. Here's 5. We also should go and fill the, out the answer. So 1 comma 0, always write it as an order pair, 5 comma 0. Okay. Now, according to our chart above says, if you have the intercept form, aka factor form students, you first plot the root checked. Now, we want to find the k. Remember, the h value is in the middle of the root. Once we have the h value, we plug it in to get your k value. So now that we have plotted the root, aka x-intercept, this is your axis of symmetry, which is also h. So that's going to be the re. So both, both of these could be filled out. So h is 3. This is 3. A is negative 1 in the front, so that's negative 1. Axis of symmetry, x equals 3. All of that can just easily be found. Then it says, now that you have your h, plug it in to get your k. So, whoa, that pen is way too fat. Okay, let's erase that. So let's plug it in. Y, which is the same as value for k. That's what we're looking for. There's a negative 1 in the front. Since h is 3, 3 minus 5 times 3 minus 1. So k is going to come out to be, let's see, 
3 minus 5, negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative 1 in the front is positive 2. Positive 2 times 3 minus 1, so that's 2, so that's going to be 4. So k is going to be 4. So, oops, k is right here. That means comma 4. There you go. We can also fill out the transformation, but let's sketch out the graph first, okay, guys? All right, k is, so 3 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. Just like that. Now, transformations is based on the a, h, and k. So since a is negative 1, that is a reflection over the x-axis. Reflection over x-axis. h is positive 3, so that's going to make the graph go right 3 units. And then k is 4, so that's going to make the graph go up 4 units okay now we are going to remember all every single problem has these tables so you can just ignore these table because when you are in factor form it is just easier to graph it out using the x-intercept and the vertex um, let's find the y-intercept okay so y-intercept is when x equals to zero meaning that we're going to plug in 0 for x. So 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 0 minus 1 is going to be negative 1. So that's going to give us a negative 5 for y-intercept. So that's right there. That means the other side should have the same exact value since it is totally symmetrical. So here is the upside-down parabola. We know it's upside-down because the a is negative. Okay, so let's write this in, 0, comma, negative 5. Your domain for this one, students, is always going to be all reals, or if you are going to write it as the interval notation, it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. The range, the arrows are going downward, so we know we're going to have y less than or equal to, and the k value up here is 4. So y, y less than or equal to 4, my bad. Now, in the notation, we have to write negative infinity first, so or, comma, up to 4. And 4 is bracket since that is inclusive. It is not one-to-one, -one, students. Let's see. Next one says increasing. Increasing is when we can hike up or think of it as like a positive slope. So increasing is on the left side of the axis of symmetry. So it's negative infinity to the h value, which is 3. Decreasing is when, think of it again, is sliding down or we are going to have a negative slope. So that's going to be from the h value of 3 to infinity. Rate of change, since this is not a straight line, so it's going to vary. It's opening downward, so we will have a maximum at the k value of 4. Okay, so f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 10. This is definitely in standard form. And standard form, students, is easiest to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is straight up 10. So let's write that down, 0 comma 10 which we could also plot that right away, okay? Now, the a value is 3. We do have to find the h and the k value manually. So h is going to give us, to find h, that is going to be a negative b divided by 2 times a. b is 12, so that's going to be negative 12 divided by a is 3. So 2 times 3, that's going to be 6. So negative 12 divided by 6 h is going to give us a negative 2. We are going to need to, to plot, I'm sorry, not plot, plug that in to get your k value, aka the y value. So f of negative 2 is going to be 3 times negative 2 quantity square plus 12 times negative 2 and then plus 10. So this is your k value, okay guys? Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Ne negative 2 times 12, that's going to be negative 24. Drop down the 10. So k will give us a 12 minus 24, which is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 10 is going to be a negative 2. So negative 2. Oh, h and k are exactly the same. All right. 
Now, that vertex, so negative 2 down 2. That means the axis of symmetry is going to be do, 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 at x equals a negative 2. Let's fill that in. Transformation, a, h, and k is all you need for transformation. A value is 3. That means it is a vertical stretch factor of 3. H is a negative 2, students. So a negative 2 is going to go left 2 units. K is a negative 2, so that's going to go down 2 units. Okay. We do need to graph this out. So we are going to start with the phi points for the parent function. Okay, So this is the parent chart. And remember, we have to, well, I wouldn't say we have to, but these are the five points that are easiest to plug in into y equals x squared. So by now, we should know that this is going to be positive 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1, and 4. The transformations, the 3a, I'm sorry, the a equals to 3, that is a vertical stretch, so we are going to take that and multiply 3y, the h equals to negative 2, so that's going to go left, so x minus 2. The k being negative 2 as well, that's downward, so we are going to apply that to the output values, okay? So we're going to take one at a time. Negative 2 minus 2 is now going to be, let's use this color, negative 4. And then this one, negative 1. Minus 2 is negative 3, 0, minus 2 is negative 2, 1, minus 2 is negative 1, 2, minus 2 is now 0. So I'm going to make this line right here so you can see how they are being transformed. Next, the y value, one, I'm sorry, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 2 is 10, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, 0 times 3 is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. 1 times 3 is 3, minus 1 is going to be... 1 times 3 is 3, minus 2 is going to be 1. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 2 is going to be 10. And as you can see, the y values are going to be symmetry, okay? Let's plot it really quickly. Negative 4, go up 10. We know A is positive 3, so we know it is supposed to be opening upward. So it's going to be ne negative 4, 10. Negative 3, positive 1. Negative 2, that's the vertex. This is your H comma K. And then it's just going to reflect. Negative 1 is back here. And we did see that that was going to be a y-intercept since c is 10. So connect this. Make sure it makes more of a u-shape. Okay, so round it out the bottom just like that. You miss a dot, just make it really, really fat. Just like that. Arrows on both sides. Let's find some information. Oh, miss a dot, make it fat. All right, x-intercept, let's find it manually. x-int students is going to be when y equals to 0. So 0 equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 10. This one doesn't look like it is factorable, so we are going to use the quadratic formula. Negative b is going to be negative 12 plus or minus. We are going to zoom in really quickly. Square root. Square, oh, there it is. Square root b squared, so 12 squared minus 4 times 3 is a. C is 10 all over 3, that's your A, so 2A, so 2 times 3. So X equals negative 12 plus or minus. That's going to be, let's see, 12 squared is 144. And 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 10 is a negative. It's minus 120 all over 6. So X equals negative 12 plus or minus. 144 take away 120, so that's going to be a positive number, 24. So 24 students, 
the square root, we do need to simplify that out. So that's a plus or minus. That's 6 times 4. Square root of 6 is not going to be a very nice number, but square root of 4 is. So negative 12 plus or minus square root of, I'm sorry, square root of 4 is 2. So square times square root of 6 and going to be 6. We have to simplify a little bit more. Negative 12, sorry, they are all even. So we are going to divide each and every term by 2. So this is going to be divided by 2, by 2, by 2, only the outer terms, okay? So x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is, is 1. So it's just now rad 6 all over 3. So this is your two x-intercepts right here. Okay, so let's go and write those two x-intercepts in our answer. So, oops. Let's erase that. Negative 6 plus is one answer, students. Rad 6 all over 3. And then the second answer is minus. And then we can just do comma 0. The domain of all parabolas is going to be all reals. Or we can use interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Your range looks like your vertex is negative 2 comma negative 2, so your range is going to go upward. So it's going to be negative 2 all the way to infinity. It is not a one-to-one. -one. Increasing is going to be to the right, students, of the axis of symmetry. So that's going to be from neg that's going to be from negative 2 all the way to the right, which is infinity. So that means the other side of the axis of symmetry, which is negative infinity to negative 2, is the decreasing interval. The rate of change, since this is not a V-shape or line, the rate of change is going to vary. You're going to have a minimum value, and it's a K value, which is negative 2. So example 3 sets y equals 1 half x times x plus 4. So again, this is the factor form because it looks like it's already factored out for us, aka intercept form. Intercept form. That means it's really easy for us to find the x-intercept. Um, but before that, let's find a. a is this guy right here, so that's going to be a half. We don't know h yet, so let's um, solve the x-intercept. What do you think? Okay. So x in a step, guys, is when y goes to 0. So we're going to go 0 equals 1 half x times x plus 4. Take each factor, and then we set it equals to 0. So 1 half x times 0, that means x has to be 0. Then over here, x plus 4 equals 0, that means x has to be negative 4. So those are your two x in a set. Let's fill that in. So 0, comma, 0, and we set negative 4, negative 4, comma, 0. Okay, let's plot those. Two, two, two. One's right there, one's right there, and we said, okay, well, h is right in the middle, which is also your axis of symmetry. So that's going to be at a negative 2, negative 2 x equals negative 2. To find k, we are just going to plug that in to the original equation. Are you guys ready? So k equals, which is y equals 1 half. Every time we see an x, we are going to plug in the h value of negative 2. So negative 2 plus 4. So k equals 1 half times a negative 2 is a negative 1. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, so your k value is negative 2 again. Oh my, wow. How does that happen where the vertex uh, for two different problems comes out to be exactly the same? Amazing. All right. So, do, do, do. Okay. So now, guys, we have three dots. Let's state the transformation. So, A being a half, it's going to be a vertical compression factor over a half so it's gonna look wider okay h being negative 2 is going to be left two units and k being negative 2 is down two units 
So let's find the y-intercept so we can graph this out. Y-intercept is when x equals to 0. So that means y equals 1 half times 0 times 0 plus 4. So this is going to be 0 times 4, which is 0. So y-intercept is at 0, 0, which is the same as your x-intercept. So with three dots, two, 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 up and up, let's write in our y-intercept, 0, comma, 0. Domain is all reals, or write it as an interval notation. Your range is from negative 2 and go upward. It is not a one-to-one. -one. Increasing is going to be on the right side. So that's going to be from the h value of negative 2 all the way to the right. Decreasing, it's on the left, so negative infinity to negative 2. Rate of change, student, is going to vary, right? We have a minimum value again at negative 2. Um, now, because this is an um, intercept form, so we don't really need to use the tables. Okay, example 4 says y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 5. So since there's no number right there, that is going to be a negative 1. This is in standard form, so we can find the y-intercept right away. So which is c value. So y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 5, since c is negative 5. And let's plot that right away. Why not? All right, so now let's find the h value h value is going to be a negative b divided by 2 times a b is 4 so negative 4 divided by 2 times a is negative 1 so you're going to end up with an h value of positive 2 plug that in to get your y value so y which is k equals negative 1 and then 2 squared plus 4 times 2 is 8 drop down the 5 so k is going to be a negative 4 plus 8 minus 5, so k is going to come out to be negative 1. Okay, so we can plot the vertex right away, students. We can also write the axis as symmetry, which is always x equals the h value. We can transform. The negative 1 is going to be a vertical reflection. That means it's over the x-axis. And a 2 positive is right 2 units. And a negative 1 is going to be going downward, so down 1 unit. So our vertex has to reflect that, okay? All right, we plotted the y-intercept. And then our h comma k, the vertex is 2 comma negative 1. That's a point, so 2 is to the right, negative 1 is right there. We will start with the parent, y equals x squared, and again, five identical inputs. So this is 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So those outputs are fast and easy to find. a is negative 1, so negative 1 times y. h is a positive 2, so x plus 2. And k is negative 1, so that's going to change all of the outputs, okay? So the a and the k will always change the outputs. Let's transform all of the x values first. First x is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 2 plus 2 is 4. Then we can take all of the parent out. Puts, and we are going to change that right here. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, minus 1 is going to be negative 5. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, minus 1 is negative 2. Then we have a negative 1. And remember, this should really reflect, so we should get the first two outputs here. Um, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, minus 1 is now back to negative 2, and we know this is going to be a negative 5. We have enough dots to plot. 0, negative 5. That was already known. That was your y-intercept. 1, negative 2, which is right here. 2, negative 1, that was the vertex. Okay. And then it reflects just like that. We know a is a negative 1 value, so that definitely has to open downward, which is expected. 
Well, we do not have the x-intercept because it does not touch the x-axis. The domain is all real, or we can say it's a negative infinity to infinity. So the range is going to start from a negative infinity. Since the k value is negative 1, it will take a break at 1, including 1. Um, it is not a 1 to 1. Now, increasing is going to be on this left side of the axis of symmetry. So increasing is from negative infinity all the way to your h value, which is 2. Decreasing intervals on the left side of, I'm sorry, on the right side of the axis of symmetry. Uh, because remember, this is where we can slide down. Whee! Okay, so that's going to be from 2 to infinity. The rate of change, we are going to say it varies until you guys have um, some more math background. It is going to be a maximum value and whichever the k value is, which is going to be a negative one.